خداون کی حمد کرو خداون کے حضور نیا گیت گاؤ اور مقدسوں کے مجمع میں اس کی مدح سرائی کرو اسرائیل اپنے خالق میں شاد مان رہے فرزندان سیون اپنے بادشاہ کے سبب سے شاد مان ہوں وہ ناچتے ہوئے اس کے نام کی ستائش کریں اور دف اور ستار پر اس کی مدح سرائی کریں کیونکہ خداون اپنے لوگوں سے خوشنود رہتا ہے وہ حلیموں کو نجات سے زینت بخشے گا گڈ مارننگ صبح خیر سلام جے مسیدی آئی ایم سارا گل فکر آف دا یونائٹیڈ بینیفٹس آف سینٹ اسٹیونس وتھ سینٹ جیمس چرچ ان بلیک برن اے وارم ویلکم خوش آمدید ان دس ملٹی لنگول سروس آف پریز اینڈ ورشپ تھیم آف آر سروس ٹوڈے از سیلیبریشن آف ریلیشن شپس وی بگن وتھ بیوٹیفل ورشپ سانگ جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام بل ہین کا سہارا پاپیوں کا دوست ہے تو یشو تو ہے کتنا پیارا شبد نہ کیسے بتا بل ہین کا سہارا پاپیوں کا دوست ہے یشو تو ہے کتنا پیارا شبد نہ کیسے بتا جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح ہو شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح ہو شام جے جے نام یشو بن جا میں تجھ میں بنا رہا تو امرت پھل لاؤں میں گاؤں تیری جے سدا تو تجھ سا بن جا میں جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں سبھ و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں سبھ و شام سفل بجائے جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے نام یشو نام گاؤں میں صبح و شام جے جے Jai Jai Nam Yeshua 
जय जय नाम यीशु नाम गांव में सुबह हो शाम जय जय नाम यीशु नाम गांव में सुबह हो शाम जय जय नाम यीशु नाम गांव में सुबह हो शाम जय जय नाम यीशु नाम गांव में सुबह हो शाम Many churches across the diocese of Blackburn are serving their community of diverse backgrounds. Today, we will hear from Reverend Kamran Bhatti about his ministry in Preston, followed by a worship song sung by Mrs. Naila Kamran. Good morning, everybody. May the peace and grace of God be with you all. My name is Reverend Kamran Bhatti. And I want to say a big thank you to Reverend Sarah Gill for your kind invitation to participate in this bilingual service. Sarah asked me to share a few thoughts about my ministry. I am serving as a missionary priest and I'm based at St. Cuthbert's Church in Preston. The role of the missionary priest is involved engaging with other cultures and religions. It is about encouraging people to worship in their own languages and cultures and invite them to integrate and work together with the wider church family. I believe God is sending all these wonderful people from different nationalities and, and background to bless the church in the West. Sarah, you also asked me uh, to share what is my greatest joy in this ministry. I would say everything about jesus everything about ministry excites me i feel very excited when people grow deeper in their faith i feel excited when people welcome jesus in their lives and accept him as their lord and savior as bible tells us in luke chapter 15 verse 7 that there is more joy in heaven when someone repent i am kind of sharing the heavenly joy when someone make a decision to follow Jesus. I also love being with people, having fellowship with them, making new friends, get to know people, listening to their stories and discerning what God the Holy Spirit is doing in people's life and join in. I believe it is an honor uh, to serve God and serve his loved ones. I'm really privileged to journey along with our Iranian friends here in Preston. They are family to me. Since last two years, we have ministered more than 50 Iranians and most of them are baptized and worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of them are still on the journey of exploring the faith. Discipleship and and, and the spiritual growth is also very important for me. So we meet every week for an interactive Bible study for both South Asian and Iranian groups. Iranians are great with questions. They are not afraid to ask questions about God, Bible, and Christian life. I think they are great learners, but it's not just them who are learning. I also learning from them. They have brought a wealth of culture, richness, and understanding. It is like what Bishop Michael Nazir really emphasized. He said, mission from everywhere to everywhere. And I think this is a very helpful uh, phrase to understand mission in our today's world, in, in this 21st century. In this way, both sides see mission as an opportunity to serve each other to serve together, to learn from one another. These are just few words uh, I shared with you about our Iranian group. And I could share many stories about our Asian groups, how God is touching people's life. So what impacts my ministry is making. I see people from other faiths and culture are coming to faith, which is a blessing. People are going deeper in their faith and understanding of love of God and Bible. This is really encouraging. I see this role uh, to encourage others, to inspire others, to be 
alongside with people and to be their friend and their brother. Thank you. यीशु के पास हमें खुशी और जिंदगी मिलती है We are going to have a Bible reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 11 to 31. The reading is done by Jill Island and Callie Quinn. Luke 15, verses 11 to 31, the parable of the prodigal and his brother. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough 
and to spare, but here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father quickly said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back, safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. We are very happy to have Archdeacon Mark Island as our preacher in this service. Salaam, Hasham B. It's a great privilege for me as Archdeacon of Blackburn to be able to speak in this multilingual service. I think for me it is something of a preparation or a practice for heaven where I'm sure English is not going to be the predominant language. It's also a very happy reminder for me of the time spent in uh, Walsall, uh, where I was involved with St Matthew's Asian congregation. I'm delighted by your theme of celebration of relationships and your choice of one of my favourite Bible readings, so beautifully read by Kelly, who happens to be my secretary, and Jill, uh, my wife. We've just heard of a younger son who set off to a far country on a long journey. As it happens, I'm a younger son. And this reading reminds me of a big adventure that took place when I was just 21 years old, straight from university. I flew four and a half thousand miles away uh, to Pakistan to take a job as a teacher in Murray Christian School in the foothills of the Himalayas. When I arrived in Murray, it was the middle of the monsoon a bit like Blackburn, uh, really. Uh, it didn't stop raining for several days, uh, which of course uh, meant that the sugar in the sugar bowl was all liquid. I had mould growing on my clothes in the wardrobe very quickly. And the bidgerly, the electric, kept going off in the violent thunderstorms that we had. It was there, far from home, that I discovered my worst job in the world. Now it wasn't teaching English history, geography and journalism uh, to the children of missionaries and uh, uh, aid workers. Uh, that was a great privilege, although it was hard work keeping a chapter ahead in the textbook. No, I realised that the worst job in all the world was that of the Bijiliwala in Pakistan, in our village. He was responsible for fixing the electric every time it went off in the storm, as it frequently did. He would turn up um, in the torrential rain 
carrying two pieces of equipment. One was a rickety wooden ladder, which he'd prop against the telegraph pole, and the other was a rubber glove. And it was only ever one rubber glove. And there, whatever the weather, he would shin up the telegraph pole and rearrange all those live cables festooned in a network looking like a spaghetti gone wrong until eventually the lights came on, the bidgerly came on again. I know that if I ever had to do that job, my life expectancy would be about eight seconds. Actually, I discovered the second worst job in the world also when I was there. I think it was that of the school chokidar, the caretaker. He would wander around the school all night, uh, tapping with his stick to ward away uh, monkeys and feral dogs, whatever the weather, and rasping with a terrible bronchial cough, probably the product of too much time on the hooker. But in Jesus' uh, story, in our reading today, uh, the younger son ends up doing what was for him the worst job in the world. For him as a Jew, he ended up uh, feeding the pigs, feeding the swine, and he was so starving he would have been glad to eat the husks that the pigs ate. It was there, literally in the pigsty, that we read he came to himself, he came to his senses, and he decides to go home and fess up and face the music. It was a long journey home and he had no money so he had to walk. So on that long journey he would have had time to think about what he was going to say uh, and how terribly he had treated his father. Asking for his inheritance in that culture was tantamount to saying to his father, I wish you were dead. A declaration made all the more uh, poignant uh, by the fact that as soon as he got his hands on the dosh, he sold it all up and went away and spent it on wild living. When he decided to go home because he was that desperate, he must have dreaded his father's reaction. He decided to take a chance and hope he might be taken on as a hired servant. But what happened? Well, he did face the music, but not the kind of music he was expecting. While he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion and ran and put his arms around him and embraced him. If the father saw him while he was still far off, he must have been at the gate looking, longing, maybe day after day, hoping for the day when his son would come home. And Jesus says, this is what God is like. The point of the story, as we know from verse 1 of the chapter, is that this is how God the Father treats tax collectors, sinners, any whose lives are in a mess, who turn and come home to their father. But sometimes, of course, we behave like the elder brother, resenting God's mercy and generosity, as the scribes and Pharisees did in Jesus' time. And so the story ends with the father going outside the party, away from the music, to plead, to beg with his elder son that he would come in. And the story ends on that note of uncertainty. We don't know whether the son, the elder son, chooses to come in or not. And this open uh, ending reminds us that we have a choice. When we see the mercy and generosity of God the Father, do we respond with joy and welcome the penitent? Or do we stand back in judgment, forgetting that we too are wholly dependent on the Father's love and on his mercy? The story of the return of the prodigal is very precious to me because it reminds me that like the younger son in the story, I too spent years estranged from my human father. My parents separated when I was 14. It was the result of a very messy split and divorce and, and I didn't see my father for a number of years. But when I got back from my time as a teacher in Pakistan, I decided it was long overdue that I saw my father again. So I searched out his address and wrote to him and eventually we arranged to meet in a hotel in Oxford where I was a student. I still remember 
setting out to walk to that meeting place that evening. I stopped several times on the way wondering, am I really up for this? Can, am I ready to face my father again after all these years? What will he say? But actually I plucked up courage and I kept going. And when I got there and I went into the hotel lobby, I saw him there and he just held out his arms and embraced me. And at that moment, I knew I'd done the right thing. I had come home. But as I looked at him, I saw lines on his face. He was looking older, obviously, and I wondered whether some of the lines on his face were uh, made by the anxiety about his son and how things had turned out in the family. But I'd done the right thing. I'd come home to the father. Maybe there's somebody watching today and you've been out of touch with God for years. Perhaps now is the time to get back in touch and come home. God is waiting for you right now. He's come all the way from heaven to earth to search you out and he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to turn round, to take those first tentative footsteps, to cry a single word, Abba, Dad, Father. And if you reach out and say that you're sorry for all that's past, he will embrace you with his love. He will give you a new beginning. He will say, welcome home, my precious son, my precious daughter. If you haven't yet felt the embrace of your heavenly father, I invite you, I urge you to do so today. And now I'm going to disappear back inside from this uh, monsoon weather here in Blackburn. Thank you, Ash Deacon Mark, for inspiring us with the word of God. We celebrate our relationship with the Trinity in the words of creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in he heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come together to offer our prayers. Let us pray to God, our Heavenly Father. The response to Father of all is, hear your children's prayer. Sovereign Lord, your Son has revealed you as our Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Father of all, Hear your children's prayer. You have made your church a spiritual family, a household of faith. Through baptism, we are reborn as the brothers and sisters of Christ. Deepen our unity and fellowship in him. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You sent your son to give his life as a ransom for the whole human family. Give justice, peace and racial harmony to the world he died to save. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You gave your son a share in the life of a family in Nazareth. Help us to value our families, to be thankful for them, and to live sensitively within them. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. Your son drew around him a company of friends. Bring love and joy to all who are alone. 
help us all to find in the brothers and sisters of Christ a loving family. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. You are the God of the dead as well as of the living. In confidence, we remember those of the household of faith who have gone before us. Bring us with them to the joy of your home in heaven. Father of all, hear your children's prayer. We conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. You are welcome to join in whichever version or language you are familiar with. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer in Urdu. Ay hamare ba, tu jo aasman par hai, tera naam paak mana jai, teri baat shahi aay, teri mercy jaisi aasman par puri hoti hai, zameen par bhi ho. Hamari roos ki roti aaj hume de. और जिस तरह हमने अपने कर्ज तरंग को मुआफ किया है, तू भी हमारे कर्ज हमें मुआफ कर, और हमें आजमाइश में न ला, बल्कि बुराई से बचा, क्योंकि बादशाही और कुदरत और जलाल हमेशा तेरे ही हैं। आमें। In the Gospel of Saint John's chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. Jesus invites us to come and have the life-giving water as he promises that those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give become in them a spring of water gushing up to a eternal life. Why not come to him and have personal relationship with him? We listen to the hymn, Let Your Living Water Flow. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation.
Just pause before I share the blessing. May the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love broad and long deep and high, beyond our knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and with your loved ones today and always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Thank you for joining us in the service of celebration of our relationships. We look forward to seeing you next month on Sunday, the 1st of November at 9 a.m. The theme of the service will be living with loss in loving memory of Remain blessed and be assured that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I'm going to leave you to enjoy the song in Urdu based on the story of the prodigal son. Khuda Hafiz. Enjoy. कुछ भी न फल जो बोरा तू आजा घर लौटे आ बेटे घर लौटे आ दुनिया की भीड़ में क्यों खो रहा
Body